Welcome to the paint party. Um, I have this slide up because I wanted to remind myself um, to talk to you about the supplies, just to make sure we have everything that we need here to get started. So obviously you should have all of the supplies you got from the library, which would be your blank canvas, right? Everybody's got their blank canvas and they got brushes and paint. And the additional things that we will need are either like an old towel or a paper towel. Um, you'll need a cup to wash your brush in. This is my paint cup. Because we might need to rinse some colors off of our brush at some point. And so we'll want our water and paper towel. And then you don't necessarily need it, but you might want to have it. And I like to have one of these around. Um, I just have like a paper plate that I can kind of mix colors around on. So I'll give everybody a moment to get those things if we don't have them on hand. And um, while we do that, I'm going to talk a little bit about the river otter. So um, the river otters have been in the Russian river for years and years. And then um, we were seeing kind of a decrease in them or a decline in the number of river otters. And then in 2016, um, it, they started making it into the news and um, the river otters started to come back to Sonoma County. Um, has anyone in Santa Rosa or in Sonoma County maybe up in Healdsburg, wherever you're at, have you seen a river otter here in Sonoma County? Raise your hand if you have. See one in, um, in a creek that was like an offshoot from the Russian River. Um, in Mark West Creek, I saw river otters. Um, I think it was in 2017 or 2018. Um, and that was pretty exciting. Um, this is the North American river otter. That's the kind of otter we have here. And this picture was taken in Santa Rosa. Um, this picture was in an article that the Press Democrat did about the river otter. Um, here's another one. This one is pretty cute. This looks like a curious little otter poking his head up and probably wondering why someone was taking a picture of him. And then this picture, although it's pretty pixelated, sorry about that. This one is from Safari West. Um, if you've ever been to Safari West, you um, have probably seen their river otters that they have on display there. So a little bit about the American river otter. Uh, the American river otter. Sure. Thank you. <laughs> A river otter can actually look like a mid-sized dog swimming through the water until it pulls itself on shore and you see their long sleek bodies and thick tails that easily double their length. You also can see for otter, you can also can look for otter tracks in the mud and sand near streams. The track is nearly three inches wide and shows five toes with webbing in between. You may even notice otter scat, which is unmistakable because of its pungy, pungent, fishy smell. Okay, and why do you think that is? That the river otter would leave a fishy smell? Probably because they eat fish, right? Um, if you do get to see otters, you will be delighted with their playful nature. They can be seen sliding down mud banks and plunging into the water, engaging in what looks like a game of tag. So um, you may hear that um, river otters are referred to in that way that they are playful. And um, all right, so we're gonna move on to um, actually um, putting in our little river otter here onto our, cam uh, onto our canvas. So um, make sure you've got your canvas unwrapped. If you haven't done that, let's do that right now. You wanna take that plastic film off of it. And we're going to start with a blank, clean canvas. So um, the first thing we're going to do is actually, um, as I'm looking at this, the way I like to do paintings is um, I break them down into shapes. So if I'm looking at this painting, what shapes do you see? What is this shape right here? What's that? Oh, an oval, oval, yeah. 
So there's an oval, right? And then let's look at the river otter's body. What is the shape you see here? Triangle? Yeah, it's a triangle. So when I was thinking about how to paint this river otter, I thought, man, this looks like an oval and a triangle. This almost kind of looks like an ice cream cone laying on its side. So that kind of helped me to break it down into some shapes. And um, we're gonna do that right now on your canvas to kind of get the right shape for this river otter. So uh, the very first thing we want to do is take like a medium sized brush about this size and we're gonna dip it in our water. And I'll show you how I do that because I don't wanna make a drippy mess while I'm painting. But if I put the brush in the water, I always make sure to like scrape it off on the side of my water container so that I don't end up dripping water. And then that might make my paint not so thick. And I wanna have nice thick colors or nice thick paint because that means um, nice bright colors. So we just get it a little bit wet and we're gonna draw our basic shapes in with the lightest color that we have. And the lightest color we're working with today is this unbleached titanium, okay? So we're just gonna put a little bit of this on our plate or you can leave it in your little jar there and just pick up a little bit on your brush. And here's our example, right? So we're gonna start with an oval and then we're gonna connect it to a triangle. So follow along with me here. About halfway down on the left side, I'm gonna start to draw an oval. And it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just to like sort of give us a general idea of where our otter is gonna go. Okay. All right, and then when we add fur to him, his face is actually gonna be a little bit bigger, but we're gonna be right in this area. And see how if I make like some lines that I don't like, I can just do something different. Like say I wanted to make it that big, I could just draw a different oval. There's no mistakes or nothing we can't paint over here. So don't worry too much about getting it exactly right the first time. Now from this bottom part of the oval, I'm gonna kind of draw a line out. And this will be the bottom of our triangle. So I'm just drawing a little line out and I'm gonna kind of come almost to the edge, maybe a little bit here. Is it the white paint? Yeah, this is your off white or um, yeah, white paint. It's the very lightest color you have. Now I'm gonna connect this triangle um, to make like that ice cream cone kind of shape I was telling you about. So I'm gonna start about um, almost all the way up here, but not quite to the top of the oval. And then I'm gonna just draw a little faint straight line down. What do you think? Does it look like an ice cream cone? Yep, a little bit, but it's gonna turn into an otter here in a sec. Okay, now that we have this shape, we're actually gonna move on to our background and we're gonna come back to our otter later and fill in all of the details a little bit later. Um, but we've kind of got our basic shape in and so we know we kind of wanna leave this area alone. And when we do our background, um, we're gonna be painting blue all around him. So the very next step is we're gonna, um, you don't even have to rinse this brush off. You can just put it down and move on to a larger wide brush. And this brush will be flat. So it might look like that. Or you might have one that looks sort of like this with an angle on it. Either one of those would be good options for you. Perfect. Yep, that's it. 
All right, so now we're going to use our um, medium blue. So this one, your colors aren't labeled. This one is called cerulean blue. We've got a light blue, the cerulean blue, and then you should have like an indigo color. So you can see we're using the middle one right now, not the darkest, not the lightest, but this middle color. And we're gonna repeat the same thing with our brush to get it ready to take paint on. We're gonna dip it in the water and then wipe it off on the edge before we put paint on it. And that'll help us paint a lot more smoothly, okay? So I'm gonna just dip my brush a little bit, wipe it off, and then feel free to put some of this blue shade right on um, a plate that you're working with or whatever surface. And I'll be honest, sometimes when I'm painting too, I will put a little bit of paint, especially if I'm doing a big area like we are on this canvas, I will put a little bit of paint right on my canvas and then work it around from there. So if you did want to like get a little glob of paint on your brush, you can kind of leave a glob on there and work it around because pretty much what we're gonna do is just fill in this entire area. Can I ask a question? Yes, please. I'm sorry, so I don't have captions, so I'm missing things. What color are you using now? This is our... Is it the middle blue? blue? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. So we're just going to fill in all the way around, okay? And um, let me get this a little closer so you can see. Okay, I'm not going to get right up close. I'm going to leave a little bit of space, like a little bubble around the otter, okay? Because we're going to have fur that's going to come out. So feel free to leave a little bit of space around the edge. You don't have to get right up next to your line. And we're doing, oh, we're doing it on the top too. Yep, we're gonna go all the way around, top and bottom. What color did you call the lighter of the two blues? The lighter one is called light blue permanent or just light blue. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So I have a feeling you guys are probably getting pretty close to filling in the whole thing with this cerulean blue. Is that true? Are you getting close? Should it be thick? Like blue all the way across, no white spaces except for where our little otter is. It's okay to have a few little white spaces. That should be just fine. We're gonna come back in in just a second with a smaller brush and we're gonna do some blending right on our canvas. So it doesn't have to be 100% absolutely filled in, but we do wanna move um, a little bit quickly because we don't want this paint to dry before we get a chance to um, blend in some other colors, if that makes sense. Does that sound good to everybody? And I will get my canvas a little bit closer so you can kind of see how imperfect my blue is. It doesn't have to be exact, but I'm just 
quickly kind of filling this in all the way around. I'm almost done. All right. Okay. Do you see how I've got some areas that are a little bit thicker and some that are a little thinner? That's totally fine for right now. So let me go back to our example and I can show you what we're going to do next. Here's our example, right? And you can see that there are some parts of the water that are darker and some parts of the water that are lighter. And then there's also an area right underneath our otter that's sort of shadowy and a lot darker. And that's because that's where the rest of his body is under the water. It's kind of creating like a shadow, darker color under the water, okay? So the first thing we're going to do is use the same brush and you don't have to wash it off. You can just leave this blue color on it. We're going to squeeze out some of our, well, you won't be squeezing. You'll just be dipping your brush in there and get out some of that lightest blue color that you have. And we're gonna add some light spots like this underneath and above our river otter. So I'll show you my plate that I'm working on. I've got my dark blue here, and then I've got a blob of light blue there. I'm just gonna take the same brush without rinsing it off or anything and get some light blue on it. And it's okay if the dark blue and the light blue mix together. And then in the painting here, I'm gonna pick some spots that might look good with some uh, light blue color. This, this would be like areas where the sun is maybe hitting the water and it creates like a lighter color. So I'm gonna pick an area right down here and I'm just gonna drag my brush along it to create some light spots, okay? And then I'll do the same thing up above as well. And I'm gonna even go a little bit behind the otter here. So see how I started a little bit of lightness over here? I'm gonna not draw over it, but just kind of imagine where the light would come out on the other side and do that. And if I want it to get even lighter, you just add some more paint to your brush and add some of that light color. This is where, as we're adding more paint, we're gonna kind of fill in those areas um, that maybe weren't completely covered with paint before. I'm gonna even put some up at the top here. That kind of looks like the river water flowing behind our otter, okay? And now we have dark blue and light blue on our brush and we still don't have to rinse it out right now. We can just keep this paint on our brush and I'm gonna have you maybe even with a smaller brush, if you've got like a little brush this size, just take a little bit of black paint out and put it on your canvas, or not your canvas, sorry, on your plate for mixing. We're gonna put it kind of in between um, the light blue and the dark blue. We'll just add a little black. And then we can mix these colors together until we get a really dark blue. So a secret with black is when you're trying to make anything darker, you really just need the teeniest little bit of black because a little bit of black goes a long way when you're mixing it with lighter colors. So take just the smallest little itty bitty bit of black that you can and you can mix it in with your darker blue. And we're gonna make 
a little bit darker kind of shadowy blue. So you can always add more black if you need it, but you can't take it away. So just add little bits at a time. As you're, if you mix colors painting, that's always a good thing to do. So now you can kind of see the difference between um, the blue that we got in our kit and the blue that we mixed with the black here to get this darker kind of shadowy blue. And um, the first thing I want to do with this color is to put the shadow underneath um, our river otter. So let me show you the example and how that will look. Okay. So it sort of stays the same thickness. It's a little bit of a wavy line and then it comes a little farther because his body is going to come out a little farther in the water. So you can watch as I do that on our canvas here. I'm gonna move so you can see it a little better. Okay, we're gonna start right under here with a darker color. And then it's gonna go a little bit past the end of the river otter's body here. And then we're gonna fill it in coming up a little closer to the body, okay? So we've got kind of a shadow. I'm gonna make it a little thicker. And just a little darker color. After I did that, um, I might even go back in with my medium blue color and add a little bit more of that medium blue color as well. So again, I'm not washing my brush at this point, but I just load it up with medium blue. And I'm gonna add a little bit more in here. Okay, then I'm gonna add a little bit more of the darker color, just to darken it back up a little bit. All right. Now that I've got that darker color underneath the otter, I might just add some other more kind of dark spots in the water as well. So in an area like this, I might add some dark colors, like a squiggly line here. Um, I might have another area down here that I add the darker color to and then maybe just one more up at the top. So I'm gonna do some right here, some down here at the bottom, and then a little bit up here as well. And this just helps give our water more um, depth. Um, so it looks like the river with water flowing through it. It's got rocks underneath that are different colors. And it just helps add some good color and make our background more interesting. And then if you see any little places that need more color, um, you can add more color right now and just completely fill in um, the rest of your background. All right, I'll give everybody a little bit of time to work on that. And if anyone um, is at a point where they feel like they've filled in their background all the way, I would love to see what you've been working on if you wanna share your piece with us. Oh, very nice, Audrey, that looks great. Oh, lovely. Good job. These are looking really great, everybody. This is my daughter's, my eight-year-old. Oh, nice. Great job.
Good job, everyone. I like it. Those are looking great. Good job, Jessica. All right, is anybody getting painty yet? So far I've painted my arm and the floor. So <laughs> some of us have painted our hands, that's great. Oh, very nice, very nice work. All right, so now would be a really great time because we've made it through um, painting our background. Oh, nice painty fingers there, I see that. We've made it through our background. Um, we are going to start with clean brushes because we're gonna move on to a different set of colors now. So if you wanna clean your brushes up, um, after you do that, you may want to change your water because we're gonna work with warm tone colors. Um, so we want to have clean water too. So why don't I give us a break right now to wash out our brushes, change our water, uh, maybe get up and get some wiggles out if you need to, and then I will come back to you in just a moment. All right. Okay, so I think we're about ready to get started up again. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to go. Ready? Great. All right. Okay, so now we're gonna work with some of these warmer colors um, to make our sea otter, or not our sea otter, this is a river otter, very different. Um, does anybody know what the difference between a sea otter and a river otter might be? Um, river otters live in the river and sea otters live in the ocean. Yeah, yep, that's good. Another difference is um, their bodies. So a sea otter um, will tend to be um, a little shorter and a river otter has a more elongated body, um, which can be it's kind of fun to watch um, if you see a river otter laying on its back, like the one that we're about to um, paint here. Um, when you see them floating like that, most of their body is below the water. Um, so if you ever get a chance to see them come out of the water, you might be surprised at how long and skinny their body is because most of it stays below the water most of the time. So um, kind of what we're seeing with that long slender body is like, it's hidden in these shadows here underneath our river otter. So um, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint um, the fur on our the body of our otter. And this is gonna be um, darker than the head of our otter. So you can see in the example, we're gonna do some darker brown here and then and we're gonna mix in some of this off-white or unbleached white color um, to give it that kind of um, furry appearance. So I'm scooting this up real close to the camera. So hopefully you can see all those little brush strokes in there. So there's three colors that are in here actually. Um, one is the brown color right here. Um, you can see there's some black as well mixed in with the brown. And then we have that um, unbleached white or off-white color as well. So we're kind of darker down here towards the bottom and then working our way up towards a little bit lighter um, on the top of the body. And once we get those colors in, I want you to be able to see also um, that there's a little arm shape here. Do you see it? It kind of comes right underneath the head and his arm is kind of bent over like this. Um, actually, from this way, it's kind of bent over like this and it's holding up the book right here, okay? Um, so that's what we're gonna work on doing. First thing we're gonna need is our brown paint, okay? We're gonna grab the brown and we're gonna put it on a medium-sized brush. 
So it's not the smallest brush we have. Um, it's like a medium size. This one is flat, okay? And once I get that brown on there, I'm going to almost mostly fill in the body of this otter. So, let's see, I'm gonna get into a better spot on my canvas here. Oops. Okay, I would love to say I did that on purpose, but I didn't but it, it's gonna prove a point here. There's nothing that's gonna happen on our canvas that we can't fix. So if you um, don't like a mark that you made, we can always paint over top of it. Do you see what I did to my water here? I put a nice brown glob of paint right on the water there. So I'm gonna paint over that in a little bit, but I'm not worried about it. So again, load up with your brown and this time I'm gonna clip in my canvas. There we go. We're just gonna fill this in. So I'm kind of starting up towards the top. You could start at the bottom. It doesn't matter where you start. We're just gonna fill in the body here. And as I'm going, you might be able to see I'm kind of making short little dashes um, or lines just at a diagonal. That's just how I'm doing it. Because I imagine his fur is kind of coming off his body in that sort of a way. So I'm gonna do those kind of strokes, starting up here and near his head and pulling away towards the end of his body. And it's not gonna be, I'm not trying to make it super exact or anything. I'm just filling it in with lines in that direction. And you might notice here, I'm not leaving any space in between um, where the water is and where his body is. So you wanna kind of cover up any white spots that might be showing through on that canvas towards the edges anyways, okay? So now that we've got all of that brown filling in, I'm also gonna put a few little pieces of fur kind of coming out this way um, from behind his head. So use a little bit more brown and we're going to make a few more little pieces of fur coming out this way as well. And then underneath that oval too. Okay, now here we need just a tiny bit of black again. So your brush has brown paint on it, right? Um, you can leave that brown paint on there because we're gonna kind of blend our colors together. Uh, but what you want is your very smallest brush. Um, this is called a detail brush. So it's usually round at the tip and um, you can see it's round. You should be able to roll your fingers like this and it'll roll back and forth. If it goes bump, 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 that means it's a flat brush, uh, but we're looking for a round detail brush. And just anything tiny like that will work. And with this, we're gonna put in some of those fine details that are like the darker parts of his fur. There we go. Now I'm catching the light a little better. So I'm going to use this um, towards the bottom. 
to just make some darker lines in his fur down here. And this part is going to take a little while. Just one little line at a time. Until we've made kind of one line all the way across. Now, after we made that one line, we're going to go up just a little bit higher and put in some other rows of lines. And the higher up we go, maybe the little farther apart they're going to be spaced. So be sure to do it along this bottom edge here. And then also do it on this little patch of fur that's off to the other side of his face. Okay, now at this point, when you've got all the black lines in that you want, we do wanna rinse this brush off because we're gonna use our off-white or unbleached white next and we wanna be sure we've got a clean brush. So when you wipe it off or when you wash it off with your water, be sure that you um, wipe it on your paper towel too, just to make sure it's clean. All right, now I've got a nice clean brush. I want it to be pretty much dry too, not dripping wet. And then you can get a little bit of your off-white. And with this color, we're gonna kind of do the opposite of what we did along the bottom. We're gonna make um, lighter fur along the top. So I'm gonna do the same sort of thing up here. Making little marks of light colored fur. And just kind of, um, you know, try it out. If you make some lines that you don't like, what can you do? You can go right back over it with brown paint too if you want if you don't like any of the marks that you made. So these ones I'm kind of making them go up. And then um, I'll go right along the face here. I'm going to make these marks kind of fan out away from the face. Can you see how I'm doing that here? Just gonna fill up this whole body with some of those lighter marks. And then as I've done that, I'm gonna go back and mix together some brown and some off-white to make like a medium shade. And I'm gonna go over it again. So you can take a little bit of your unbleached white and a little bit of your brown color. And you can mix them right together on your plate and make like a medium brown tone.
try not to put any black in this because it'll turn gray really fast and we want to keep this like a warm brown color. So I'm just going to keep adding a little bit more brown and a little bit more brown until I get it kind of the color I want. And for me, it looks kind of like that, a medium brown color. And then with that detail brush again, I'm going to go back through and put in some of that medium brown color all around the face. Um, don't forget to go on the other side of the face and add some to that other area. Just kind of work your way across the body. If you feel like um, one area is too light or too dark, um, like I've got sort of a lot of the um, unbleached or off-white color here, I'm going to break that up by putting in some medium brown and then maybe even getting some more dark brown and putting a little bit of dark brown around that. And then that blob kind of goes away. I'm gonna bring this up close to the camera here so you can see how mine is looking. And make sure you pay attention to this little area back here on the other side as well. And I see that I probably need to add some light color unbleached white to that. So I'm going to do that now. While everybody is still working on filling in the body of their otter. I'm going to fix um, this blob that I made up here of brown. Sometimes it's easier to fix things if you wait a little bit. So like um, this blob, I'm going to wipe off the part that hasn't dried yet because I don't want to mix a color here. I want this to be mostly dry so that I can paint over it easily. That's kind of a little tip. If you want to paint over something, um, maybe wipe it with a paper towel and get it um, almost dry because it'll be much easier to paint over if it's dry. There we go. And that's like it never happened. All right, does anyone have any questions before we move on to paint the arm and the book? Any questions? All right, you guys are sticking with me, awesome. Okay. So now we're going to use our medium brush, which is not that fine detail one, but it's a little thicker, right? We're going to use that medium brush and I'm going to take this medium color that I made, this one right here, and I'm going to use it to draw in the arm. So if you look at the example, it's a, it's a subtle arm because it's the same color as the body, but it's going to come up underneath the face and then it's going to just be, the hand is a little bit pointed down like that underneath the book. So it's going to start right here, right underneath the face. And it's going to come up and be pointed down like that. Okay. Let me get a little closer so you can see a little better. The 
arm is gonna start. I'm using my off-white now so you can see a little better. It's gonna start underneath the face and just be a little pointed down like that. And on the top, it's going to be lighter. And then there's gonna be a little shadow. So I'm gonna use a little uh, black right under. just my bandwidth is low, so. Um. All right, so it's not, you're not gonna see it a lot, this little paw sticking up here, but we wanna give him something to hold his book in. Okay, so now I'm actually going to show you how I will draw in the book. And I'm going to do that using the unbleached white or this off-white color. I'm gonna take my medium sized brush and wipe the paint off of it. I don't need to wash it because I don't want it to be very watery, but I'm just wiping the paint off of it. And I'm going to put the shape of the book in here. So he's reading his little book and you might have a red color um, I know you might also have a magenta color too. Um, so whichever contrasting color you have, we're gonna use that eventually. But for right now, while we sketch it in, I'm gonna be using the white. So above the paw here, I'm gonna draw a little line and a little V shape actually. So the V shape is gonna be pointing towards his face. That's the top of our book. And then from the V, I'm gonna draw a line down and a line down. So now it sort of looks like an M. And then from that, I'm gonna draw another V shape, which is the bottom of the book. And I'm going to fill it in with the off-white color. So are we using the medium brush for this? You can use the medium brush for this, yeah. And then when we go back and put in our color and when we make the edges of the book, we're gonna use our detail brush, but for filling it in, we can use our medium. Okay, I know it looks a little funny right now. Don't worry about that. It'll, the book shape will become more clear as we um, kind of draw those lines. Okay, so now that we've got that, we're gonna use whatever red color we have, whether it's like a bright red or a magenta, and we're gonna use our detail brush, which is the very small brush to draw the lines around the edge of our book. So your detail brush, um, we last used it with a dark color. You wanna wash it off and dry it off and get it nice and clean. And then you wanna load it up with whatever red color you've got. So it'll look like that. I'm gonna get as close as I can to my camera so that you can see how I'm gonna do this. Yes, do you have a question there? You can unmute if you've got a question. Um, we didn't get red, we got this indigo color. Ooh, that's a beautiful color. Okay, that will make a really nice book. 
you can definitely use that for your book. I think different colors may have been given out um, for painting your book. So whichever color we haven't used yet, that'll be the color of your book. Oh, very nice. You've got a nice like magenta pink color there. I've got a red. Some of you might have like a sea green color. And with that color, um, I'm gonna leave a little bit of space here. So I'm gonna come down a little bit, not right where my off-white is, but a little farther down. I'm gonna paint that V shape, okay? That's because this off-white color is the color of our pages and we wanna leave a little bit of the pages sticking out. So we're just gonna put in a little bit of a V there with a, with a little bit of the off-white color sticking out of the top. Then I need some more red paint. So I'm gonna load my brush back up and I am going to paint this line that's down the edge of my book here. I'm gonna make a nice straight as I can kind of line. And then from the bottom of the V here, we're gonna do the same thing. And we're gonna draw a nice straight line up there to connect. And then we need a third line, which is right here at the end. And then I'm gonna connect these two bottom lines to make the corner of my book. And I'm gonna draw, but this part is gonna be covered by the paw that's holding it up. Before I fill it in, I'm gonna add some shading to the edges to um, distinguish them from the rest of the book. So with my with whatever your book color is here, we're gonna add a little bit of black to it. And we're gonna try to achieve this. Do you see how I did a little bit of a black line down the edges? And then I did two black lines at the spine of the book right here. This middle part is the spine of the book. So we're gonna do one two black lines here and then we're just going to kind of outline the entire thing. So one, two, and I'm going to connect them and then I'm going to do the same thing around the edges and then we're going to fill it in with our book color with our main color on the on the front and back cover. Okay, so the pages that are sticking out of the top here, I realize I want them a little bit lighter than what they are. So I'm gonna get um, a clean brush and I'm gonna make the page colors a little bit lighter and I'm going to fill in with red the um, top and bottom cover of the book. All right, for the noise, I'm just knocking stuff over here at home. All right, I've completely filled that in. Now I'm going to um, do the lighter color pages at the top like I was talking about, and I'm gonna outline them with black. So I need to clean my brush off for this.
I kind of redid my pages. It's hard to see. But once I outline them with black, you'll be able to see exactly. How's everybody's book coming along? Good. This might be the most difficult part. Oh, very nice. I liked that. Now that we've got those colors in, you can add a little bit more um, black to your brush and you can even make some more shadow towards the bottom of that book cover and around the paw there just added a little bit more dark color to create a shadow. Oh, very nice. Thank you for sharing that. That's looking really good. I love it. Okay, after we're done with the book and give me a thumbs up if you're done with your book. Nice. We're gonna move on to the very cutest part of the otter, which is its face. Let me get set back up on my easel here. And while I'm doing that, why don't you rinse out your brushes and start with them nice and clean because we're gonna move to our off-white color and we'll need nice clean brushes for that. Okay. I'm gonna rinse my brush off too. And we're using our medium brush for this for um, filling in the main color on the face. So you'll need this brush here, all cleaned and ready to go. And we're gonna load it up with our off-white color. And this is where it gets fun. First, you can just fill in that main part of the circle with off-white. This is where you'll find out if your brush is really cleaned off or not because if it didn't really get cleaned off, you might see some other colors come up in here, but that's all right. You can always cover over them. I think I got a little brown. brown. Wait, so which, color, which brush are we using? This is the medium brush. It's, um, it's a smaller flat brush. So you can see it's kind of pinched flat. Oh, thank you. And fill in his entire face shape here, all the way up to the edges of your book. And then once that's all filled in, we get to make that fuzzy sort of main look to his face. So you can see in our example how um, we're gonna use short brush strokes coming all the way off his face, all the way around um, to get that kind of fuzzy look to him. So with your same medium brush, we're gonna hold it differently. So when we wanna fill in a large area, we use this side, right? But if we want to make thinner lines, you just turn your brush to make sure this um, flat, thin part of it hits the canvas. So once I get paint on it, I'll show you how I'm gonna hold it. So it's um, just the thin side of it touching, not the flat wide side, but the thin side. And I'm gonna start out here 
and come in. Just like that, kind of all the way around. And you can see there's kind of like weird spaces in between it. So we're gonna fill those in by just going back over it a second time. Okay, so that it gets all filled in, but it looks nice and um, fuzzy and plush almost. He is looking nice and fuzzy now. But I can kind of see here where I where the blue is underneath. So I'm going to go back over it another time to kind of hide that blue that's under there. Just add more layers to it. Now with this same brush, this medium brush, I want you to put a little bit of brown, like the medium brown color. You, hopefully you have some that you've mixed. It's um, right here. It'll be the darker brown and the lighter brown or, and the off-white mixed together. It'll make this medium kind of brown. And right in the middle of his face, we are going to draw a diamond shape. Remember how I said I like to break things down into shapes? Well, this one is a diamond. So we're gonna put a diamond right in the middle, well, almost in the middle, a little bit higher than the middle of his face. I'm going to start by drawing like a triangle or like an up arrow and then do the opposite on the bottom to make a little diamond shape. This is um, a medium brown so it's going to be your dark brown color and your off white. Thank you. Yep. And then you can fill in that diamond shape. Now you're going to take your detail brush, which is that very thin brush, right? And we're going to put black paint on it to make his smile. And here's what his smile is going to look like. It's going to look like two smiley faces, actually. So one this way, one that way. And they're going to meet right up at the bottom of his nose. Now that we've got his little smile in, um, when he smiles, he's got a wrinkle, sort of like the same shape as the uh, rim of my hat here. 
he's got like a smile line at the top of his head. So we're gonna draw that in. It's like an upside down smiley face. And it is right here. And we're still using our detail brush. And with this detail brush, I put a lot more black paint on it. And we're gonna put in two eyes. Now the eyes are gonna be right in this area and right here. And they're gonna be directly off the sides of his nose, okay? So I'll demonstrate those for you. And they're kind of wide, so they'll, they won't be really close to his nose. They're gonna kind of come off a little bit. I'm gonna draw, you see how I'm doing it a bunch of times because I wanna get a nice circle shape. So I'm just gonna draw it a bunch of times and then fill it in all the way. There's one and then we've gotta do the other. I made a little mistake there. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm gonna go back and fix it later. So for right now, I'm just gonna wipe it so that it dries fast. Because remember, dry paint is the easiest to paint over. So if you made any little mistakes like I did, remember you can Try and get them to be dry and then paint over them. So I dried that one up and I'm just gonna paint right over it. Easy peasy. And I kind of want to fix this line a little bit. So I'm gonna paint over that and just make any little touch-ups here that I want to. And if you've done some little touch-ups like I have, um, before we put in his whiskers, you might need to rinse off your brush. Okay, so I'm gonna clean my brush off and then we're gonna put in three little whiskers on each side of his face. And they're gonna go in the area right between the end of his smile here and his eye. So get some black paint on your brush and we're gonna draw three little lines coming out. One, two, three. Same thing on the other side. One, two, three. I'm gonna make them a little darker on mine. And now that I've got um, some black on my detail brush still, I'm going to trace the outside edge of his nose, just kind of all around. And then I'm gonna clean off my brush and I'm gonna get ready to make some highlights on his face. So you can see on the example, here are the areas we're gonna put highlights. We're gonna put a highlight on the nose and then one on each of the eyes. Yes, do you have a question? What's your question, bud? Never mind. Oh, okay. All good? I'm gonna do those um, three highlights we talked about now. So I'm just gonna get my off-white color back on my brush. And on this upper side of his nose, I'm going to make a little highlight here. 
And then same thing um, towards the top of each eye, I'm gonna make um, little, um, they're little C shapes really. So it's shaped like a little letter C I'm gonna make in the top of each eye. Get a little closer so you can see a little better. And then at this point, I'm going to use that same off white color on my detail brush and I'm going to add little highlights wherever I think I need them. So I might notice here that maybe I need a few little highlights or that I wanna cover, fill this in a little better. So I might go back over top of um, the top of his head here to kind of hide where that blue line was. If you can see blue peeking through his fur there. And I might even use some of the medium brown that I mixed. So you can come back and you can use um, this medium color here and you can add some um, depth and texture to his face by um, coming and adding a few little uh, medium brown uh, fur around here. And do that at the bottom too just to add some texture. And I might do that at the top of his paw as well. Okay. And now you've got your very own river otter reading a book. And the last thing we wanna do is sign our names at the bottom. So the best way to do that is to take your detail brush, rinse it off and you can put black paint on it. And um, depending on how you wanna sign it, you can put your whole first name, you can put your initials. And then I like to put the year, just so I know what year I painted it. Um, it's kind of fun to look back on and see, oh man, I was that old when I painted this or, um, oh, that was, you know, 2021, that's the year that we did everything virtual. Or 2020 is more virtual, but it's carrying over, huh? So I'm gonna load my brush up with black. I think we forgot the ears. <gasps> You're right. We so forgot the ears. Well, I forgot them, I apologize. And they're so cute. His face really needs them too. Um, so if you've loaded up your brush with black, you're all set to do the ears. And I will show you how to do that. There's gonna be one coming off the top of his head right here, and kind of right next to the eye. And we're gonna make a C shape, just like the letter C. And then on the other side at the same spot, we're gonna make another letter C shape and then just fill those in with black. Thank you for pointing that out. Okay. He's got his cute little ears in now. If you want to even, you could add some little fur kind of coming up near the ears. If you put white on your brush. Okay. Oh, so cute. You don't necessarily need to wash your brush now to do your, sig your signature. Um, you can just wipe it off 
put a little black back on it. I'm going to put my initials TH. And then I always put the year. So I'm going to put a little apostrophe 21. So I know what year I did this. Right down in the corner there. And there you have it, a complete river otter. Oh, that's beautiful. If you've got your finished picture, or even if you're almost done, we've come to the end of our time today. It's um, 2.28. So wherever you're at right now, why don't you hold up your picture? You don't even have to show your face if you don't want to. You can even have your picture hold up the entire screen, but I would love to see what everyone painted today. Oh, wow. Beautiful. Great job. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> Love it. All right. Good job, Jessica. Good job. <gasps> Lovely. Everybody, you did such a good job. Thank you for sharing your pictures too. And um, thanks for coming to spend some time painting this afternoon. Thank you so much, Tara. This was really Thank fun. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Bye, everybody. Thank you. This was super fun. Thank you so much. Thank you.